Hi everyone. So, line breaking, how hard could this possibly be? There's a few properties and keywords in CSS that you can use to control how to wrap text in different lines. And it may not be entirely obvious at first sight what the logic of it all is. I recently became the co-editor of the CSS text specification where all of this is defined. And so today I'd like to walk through this with you to try to get a sense of how, how it works. I think at the core of it is the white space property. It has a bunch of values. And what you can do with it is control whether sequences of spaces in your markup get collapsed down to one or not. What happens to tabs and line feeds? Do our lines allow to wrap at all? And what happens to the spaces that would be at the end of a line? So, yeah, another thing that is often overlooked with this property is that it doesn't only work on paragraphs and divs and block elements. You can use it on any element, uh, spans, what have you. So that also is interesting, as we'll get back to. Here is a simple example of white space normal. I've put a bit of color in here to see what we have. We have some spaces, some line feed, uh, force line break. If we just turn that into a linear string, it looks a bit like this. And white space normal will process this as follows. First thing is it does is get rid of the spaces that are around a line feed. Next thing is the line feeds themselves get converted to spaces. Then if you have several of them in a row, as you do after the period, they get collapsed down to one. And after that, around each spaces, we allow the line to wrap. So let's get some lines and fill them. So far as there's room, we're good. We'll reach the end of the line, fill the next word in, drop the space. We have a caret return here. So go to the next line, put the last word. And this is pretty normal. That's why it's called white space normal. So tabs get converted to spaces. Spaces around a carriage return get dropped. Carriage returns themselves get converted into spaces. Series of spaces get changed into a single one with wrapping opportunities on its side. And if you have any wrapping opportunity in the string, they stay. White space no wrap is almost the same thing, except it discards the right any wrapping opportunity you might have. White space preline is also almost the same as white space normal, but this one converts the uh, line feeds in your source code into forced line breaks. Now for a very different one, white space pre keeps the tab characters as tabs. It keeps spaces around any line feeds that you may have. It turns your line feeds into forced breaks. If you have a series of space, they stay in and you can't wrap around them, and any wrapping opportunity that was in the line is gone. White space pre-wrap is almost the same thing, but you can wrap at the end of a series of preserved white space, and if you had wrapping opportunities, they're still there. And white space break spaces is a small variant on this. The only difference is that if you have a series of white space, you can break at any point in the series. You don't have to keep them together. So once you do that, you start filling lines, and as you do, uh, if you have a collapsible space at the, end of, at the beginning of the line, you drop it. If you have a preserved tab character, one that hasn't been converted to a space, uh, then you shift the content to the next tabulation. Preserved line breaks, well, they break the line. And if you have wrapping opportunities and the line is full, you can wrap. There is a little subtlety about uh, white space characters at the end of the line. You might think, who cares, we can't see them. Most of the time that's true, but sometimes you can. Like if somebody is selecting the text, you'll see them. If you put a background on your span, you'll see them. If you have underlines, you'll see them. So in some cases, you might want to know what happens to them. Collapses both spaces at the end of the line, they just get removed. The type of preserved spaces you get with white space pre, they stay there. And if it happens to be so many spaces that it would be longer than the line, they just overflow into the padding, the border, the margin, and whatever's after. White space pre-wrap, almost the same, except in some browsers, when it starts overflowing, they just get chopped. And break spaces will actually wrap the spaces that would overflow to the next line, so you can see them there. Let's do a little simple example. Here's a paragraph, some text in it, white space is normal, the line is not very long, so it wraps in the middle, everything's pretty simple. But actually, that's not what I want. Here, 
this white space thing is a bit of code. I want to keep it as a single thing. So it's convenient that the white space property applies to any element. I apply it to just the code element. And now I've suppressed wrapping opportunities that was introduced by the hyphen. A hyphen character has a wrapping opportunity at the end of it. I just removed it with white space no wrap. And there you go. Let's go at a different example. If you want to do poetry, in poetry, typically, the line break is at a well-chosen place. So this is how you could write your markup. You write your text, go to the next line. But this is markup. Maybe you want to indent your code. So you have tab characters in there. They have nothing to do with your poetry, so you don't want to preserve them. And you still want to be responsive. So white space pre-line does exactly what you want. Your line breaks are preserved. If your line is long, that's what you want. If it's short, uh, you wrap the lines. And we don't have BR tags in there, so if we want to change, and maybe on a different medium, uh, it would be nicer to just use a single line. Depends what kind of poetry you're doing. Then there you go. <laughs> different, maybe slightly more common situation. Editable elements. Uh, if you're in the text area in the web page, or you have some content editable element, and you're typing text, and you press the space bar a bunch of times, it would be really bad if these spaces get collapsed together and you can't see the extra spaces that you're adding. So if white space is normal, the browser will try and help you, and instead of inserting spaces, they'll insert a mix of spaces and non-breakable spaces. And this is a dirty hack that you should try and not use. So by default, on the text area element, the browser sets white space to pre-wrap. So the lines will wrap and the space will stay there. Uh, on your own editable elements, you probably want to do the same. Unless you want to use break spaces so that you have a slightly saner behavior at the end of lines. If you keep pressing space, you'll go to the next line with, pre with break spaces, not with pre-wrap. But OK, we're laying out text. What happens if it just doesn't fit? Here is the overflow wrap property that lets you wrap or not when things would otherwise overflow. This, by the way, only works if you have allowed wrapping in the first place. If you're white space pre or no wrap, it won't do anything. And that property, too, can work on any element, not just blocks. So let's go with a simple example. This is some text. We can fit it into the line. So far, so good. Looking wouldn't fit. That's fine. We have a wrapping opportunity. Go to the next line. Keep going. The commit ID wouldn't fit. OK, that's fine. Let's, oh, it still doesn't fit. Uh, and if overflow wrap was normal, we stop here. It overflows. That's it. Uh, but if you say overflow wrap anywhere, if it would otherwise overflow, wrap anywhere, and that's what you get. There's another value on this property that is almost exactly the same, a uh, break word. On the previous example, it would have done the same thing. Uh, but here's a table. I've said the width of the cell should be five characters, and please break word if it would overwrap. And it doesn't work. Why is that? Because tables are kind of weird. When you, you can't actually force a table cell to be smaller than the minimum size of the content inside of it. So here, the minimum size is this nine-character string, so the table cell is bigger, so it wouldn't overflow, and overflow wrap doesn't get the chance to apply. Overflow wrap anywhere changes how the con what the content considers its minimum size to be. It says, I can wrap myself narrow, so the minimum size is one, you've asked for a size of five, I can do that, but it would overflow, I get a chance to wrap, and there it works. You had get similar situation inside a flexbox item, a grid item. They also take this intrinsic minimum into account. Um, so pick between the two, there, depending on what you're trying to do. So far, we see what we do when we have wrapping opportunities and we have content that fits or that doesn't. But can we make more wrapping opportunities depending on what we want to do? Here's one way: hyphens. So that lets you create wrapping opportunities in the middle of words, and if we happen to wrap at that point, a hyphen character will be inserted. Uh, that, too, works only if you allow wrapping, and it works on the element, so you can choose where you apply it or not. How do you turn it on? Well, it's on by default, hyphens manual, and then you can insert this HTML entity, a soft hyphen, anywhere you want it. If your line is long, you won't see it. If your line gets shorter, it just does what you would expect. Except rap writing markup like this is extremely annoying, so let the browser do it for you. Uh, hyphens auto will let the browser insert the hyphens wherever they need it. But you need to declare the lang attribute in your source code for this. Is this language French? Is it English? Is it Japanese? Is it what? You have to write it so. Why? 
Well, here's what would happen if you put hyphens at random places. I don't know about you, but I find this very hard to read. Uh, so we don't do that. And in order to put the hyphens in the right place, the browser needs to use a dictionary of where the hyphenation points are supposed to be. And the dictionary is language specific. So if you don't give a lang attribute, you don't get automatic hyphenation. Here's another CSS property that can control wrapping opportunities. Word break. Can we break at any point inside a word? Should we keep all the letters together? Should we do the normal thing for that language? Uh, if you say break all, break at any point within the word, this will take precedence over hyphens. So you will break and not get a hyphen. And also, this only works if you can wrap in the first place and applies to any element. Uh, but what is this about? This is a bit of an internationalization story. In English, you can wrap where there are spaces. In Japanese, there are no spaces. So we need to do something else. Uh, in Japanese, you can wrap anywhere between any letter. Except, actually, you can't wrap between the letter and the punctuation sign that goes after it. You have a Japanese comma in the middle here. Um, so that's what it works normally. Korean used to be the same as Japanese. Uh, now they're writing it with spaces, but they wrap anywhere anyway. Uh, except some authors think this is not nice, and they would rather keep all the letters of the word together, so that's what the property can be for. But if you're not Korean, what can you do with this? Uh, let's say you're writing a travel guide, and you have this little sentence with a bit of Japanese in it. Uh, so that's doing the normal thing for English and Japanese, but maybe if you're a travel guide and you imagine somebody walking the streets of Japan and trying to compare the signs with what's on the book, the fact that there's a line break in the middle might be not so good. So how about we keep all these Japanese letters together? And there you go. Keeping on Japanese for a bit. Again, you can wrap anywhere, but sometimes it's not actually so nice. On a title, like, you have very few words, very limited amounts of space. You want to kind of control where the break is, and breaking between words would be nice, but there's no space to find the word. So you put a WBR, word break, element, in your markup, where the word boundary is. And if white space was normal, it wouldn't do anything, because you can break everywhere anyway. But if you say keep all, it would keep all the letters of the word together, except where you said it's fine. And so if you shrink it, I don't know if you can read Japanese, but on the right side, it's much nicer. Um, here's another one, line break. Actually, even though this one has a very generic sounding name, it's actually quite specialized uh, to punctuation in Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. That's not the only thing it does, but it's the main thing it does. As I just said, between the letter and the punctuation side after it, you're not supposed to break. And there are a bunch of rules about where you can and cannot, and this property helps with that. It also has a let's break anywhere mode, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Because this needs to do the right thing for the right language, and every country in the world has different typographic traditions, you still need to use the lang attribute in your markup, so please do that. And same comment. If you can't wrap, that won't do anything, works on the alien element. So here's a bit of Japanese text. This is like discount campaign from September to October. Uh, if you look at the one on the top, we're having a column at the beginning of the line. It's not very nice. And in Japanese, 9 tilde 10 means from 9 to 10. It would be more readable if these things stuck together. So you have increasing degrees of strictness here. If you look at the second example, the, the, com the, the column has kept a letter together with it. They're together on the next line, so that, that the line doesn't start with the column. In English, it wouldn't. You have a space after it. But here we don't, so you have to do that. Uh, even stricter is the third example, where you keep the thing before and after the tilt together, so that it's more readable. In, in long measures of text, when you have plenty of room, stricter variance tends to be nicer. But if you're doing like a small figure annotation, a newspaper column, or something like this, the lines are very narrow. And if you're doing a strict rule, um, you'll have a lot of empty spaces at the end of lines. So people want to choose, and so they can. If you're not doing Japanese newspapers, maybe you don't care all that much, but some people do. Uh, the other trick that the line break property has is line break anywhere. If you're trying to do something like this, uh, if you press the space bar, it actually uh, insert spaces, you can wrap, you can wrap anywhere. So if you're trying to do that kind of layout, this is what you're looking for. All right, can we actually use all these things? <laughs> um, mostly, yes. 
but there are some caveats. Uh, white space. The break space value doesn't exist anywhere yet. It's coming soon to Chrome, but it's not there. Um, as we saw early in the presentation, it's actually quite similar to pre-wrap, except for what happens to series of spaces, especially at the end of lines. So if you want break space and it's not there, maybe pre-wrap is an okay substitute. Uh, but pre-wrap has its own set of issues because for the spaces that are at the end of the line, browsers don't exactly agree on what they're supposed to do. Some of them just let them overflow, some of them just truncate it where you hit the edge of the element. If you don't like that, go complain at the browsers. Uh, overflow wrap. Can we use this? Yes. But this used to have a different name. It was called word wrap, and nobody could ever figure out what that name was for. So we now have a better name. Overflow wrap anywhere means that if it would overflow, you can wrap anywhere. That's kind of easier. Uh, but Edge has not yet implemented uh, the new name. So if you want to support that, use both or use the old one. And yeah, uh, overflow wrap anywhere is not supported yet. Uh, the original one is overflow wrap break word, but as we saw in tables, it's not so nice. So we introduced the anywhere variant, and it hasn't been implemented yet. Chrome and Safari have a proprietary uh, extension that does the same thing. For some reason, they thought that saying word break break word was a sensible way of doing this. So if you do that there, it works. It does exactly what you want. It's just on the wrong property, and you can't use it for what it's supposed to be anymore. So uh, hopefully they'll fix that soon, but they haven't yet. Hyphenation. It works in Firefox. It works in Edge and Safari if you prefix it. It works in Chrome if you don't use Windows or Linux. Uh, <laughs> um, you probably know where to find Google. Go tell them this is terrible, and maybe they'll fix it. And word break. It works in Edge and Chrome. See, it's not always the same guys are getting it wrong. Uh, in Firefox and Safari, it also works, but it does too much. As we've talked a bit about, between the letter and the following punctuation, you're not supposed to, in, to have breaks. Well, if you do break all in Firefox and Safari, they just break anything, anywhere, do the wrong thing with punctuation. Um, go complain, maybe they'll fix it. And line break. So line break anywhere is also new and so it's not implemented anywhere yet. But the buggy version of word break break all in Firefox does the same thing, so maybe you can use that. Uh, and the other values work fine in all browsers except Firefox, which just doesn't support the property at all. So here's the little word cloud from the beginning. Um, I hope that by now it's a little bit less cloudy and fuzzy and you see a bit of sense and structure into the system and that next time you have some kind of typographic problem to solve, you know which tool to reach for and what dangers to watch out. Thank you.